Ever since getting lost in the world of Nern in Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, I have loved me some Bethesda. I've even forgiven them for breaking our hearts with Fallout 76. It seems as though since Fallout 76, Bethesda's reputation has been a bit murky. We know they're capable of big, immersive, and innovative games, but we also know that they, much like most big video game developers these days, are capable of making promises that they can't or simply don't intend on keeping. However, despite that, I've remained cautiously optimistic about the release of Starfield, and after Bethesda's big Starfield Direct at Summer Game Fest, I'm now, surprisingly, if not foolishly, even more excited about the game's release this September. There's one thing you have to admit about Starfield. It is ambitious. Their Direct showed off many new features, an updated, in-depth character creation system, extremely detailed ship customization that allows you to customize your cruise ship from the inside out, from functional add-ons that affect how far you can travel and how many people you can have aboard, to even hiring a maintenance crew to keep your ship up and running. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Starfield's 45-minute Direct showed off an almost overwhelming amount of features. However, what left me the most optimistic about Starfield after seeing Saturday's Direct was that, to put it plainly, it looks like such a Bethesda game. Bethesda games have always had a particular charm to them. Whether you're slaying dragons in Skyrim or vaporizing rad roaches in Fallout, you always felt like you were playing a Bethesda game. For me, it felt like that charm was missing from everything that we saw about Starfield leading up to this Direct. Now I feel like that charm is finally back. It's hard to articulate in detail what that charm is exactly, but if I had to put it into words, it's that all the mechanics in the game don't simply exist to give you more things to do, more guns to shoot, and more ships to fly. They exist so that you can experience a story that unfolds and adapts to a playstyle and the choices that just feel natural to you. While in most RPGs, you choose a build with traits that are going to set you up for success in the later stages of the game that you're playing. And success typically means that you're able to take on the powerful enemies that await you in those later stages. It seems in Starfield, much like most Bethesda developed games, success just means having a fun and unique experience playing the game. For example, the customization of your character in Starfield goes further than cosmetic choices and stats. Choosing your background starts your character off with an origin story, three basic skills, and even allows you to take on quests that wouldn't be accessible to players without that same background. You can also choose three character traits that makes your experience in Starfield even more unique to your character. To illustrate, the Starfield Direct highlighted a trait called Serpent's Embrace which deters otherwise hostile zealots from attacking you because you share the same religion. Another trait called Kid Stuff simply just gives you parents that you can visit at their home, giving you fork over 2% of your credits to support them. It's stuff like this, and of course the throwback to Oblivion's adoring fan quest, which is referenced in the new Hero Worship trait, that make me excited to immerse myself into the universe that Starfield is going to take us to. Again, that doesn't even begin to scratch the surface on all of the new features showed at the Starfield Direct. Starfield promises new mechanics like space warfare, zero-gravity combat, while also refining and overhauling features already familiar to fans of Bethesda-developed games, like weapon mods and base building, which now has a more intuitive top-down view. Whether or not Starfield actually delivers on these promises is, of course, yet to be seen. But I, for one, am extremely excited to find out for myself come September 6th. We'll be at Summer Games Fest all week, so be sure to stick around for more coverage of the event. You can do so by following Engadget on all social media platforms, and of course, subscribing to the YouTube channel for more news, reviews, and tech stuff.